Maybe it's the alcohol talking, the whiskey my doll had in his blood, but I'm rather proud of you. Look at you, a few nights away from becoming a neonate. Although I should say I'm rather proud of myself, too. After all, you were a lot of work. But the clay was good, I made a good choice embracing you, out of all the other candidates. Oh? Do you really want to know? Are you sure you want me to be honest? Very well, child. Ultimately, I do believe honesty is a sign of respect, vulnerability, and, to some degree, love. I can start by telling you why I didn't embrace you. I didn't embrace you because you were so special, my little chosen one. Had I wanted someone really special and had the consequences not been devastating for all of us, I'd have embraced a mage. <laughs> but we all know what happened to Lucius, that fool. Some think I embraced for love. That is the worst mistake you can make. Anyone who knows our history can plainly see that. Not to mention... What? The only thing missing from my unlife was... The affection of a recently divorced used car salesman. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Though you are something to look at, for your age, I'll give you that. You think I embraced for companionship, loneliness, or maternal instinct? I assure you, all of those needs died with my embrace. And I chose you because you showed traits I found useful to me. Because no one would miss you, and that is the truth, child. You were convenient, and embracing someone was a necessity to me. <laughs> Why are you so shocked? I am being perfectly truthful. That is a lie. What your coterie told you is a lie. Alan was not embraced for love, and Cynthia is still around by an absolute miracle of fate. And I'm surprised her sire didn't get offed because of her already, but it's not too late, really. Yes, they all say that. My sire takes care of me. My sire allows me freedom and respects me. Yeah, right. Although maybe their no-name sire Ansela wannabes can get away with such behavior. But I, a keeper of Elysium, cannot afford such attitudes. No, you were planned, child. You were weighed and measured from the moment I first laid my eyes on you. I don't make mistakes because the right to sire childer is given to few, and I was not going to squander my gift on some rebellious child who would be of no use to me. See, at that time in my own life, I had acquired so many resources, I couldn't keep up. My ghouls couldn't keep up, so I decided to embrace you, that you manage some resources for me. Your mind is stronger than that of a ghoul, you can use disciplines better, with greater success, and you won't come begging for my vitae when withdrawal kicks in. Does your coterie actually think my generation embraced them because... what? They're special, wise, moral, societally aware and involved. Oh yes, me, elder of my clan, keeper of Elysium, I saw this kind in a club one night and... They awakened so much sexual attraction in me that, like a pubescent teen, I ran up to them and embraced them like a fangirl at a boy band concert. Wow, you really are besides the point. But don't worry, when you reach my age and my position, you'll understand. Some embrace for punishment, that's true, and some, like the Sabbat idiots, are trying to get us all killed. But we, the Camarilla, we don't do that. The progeny, thou shall only sire another with the permission of thine elder. If thou createst another without thine elder's leave, both thou and thy progeny shall be slain. The accounting. 
those thou create are thine own children. Until thy progeny shall be released, thou shalt command them in all things. Their sins are thine to endure. So there, had you not been to my liking, submissive and obedient, I would have destroyed you, child. Siring is always a risk, and I will diminish that risk any way possible. Well, you need blood too, right? So then, I now have to share the city's resources with you, which statistically increases the chances of mishaps. Do you know the prince actually has people monitoring the kindred to kind ratio in the city? Mm hmm Monitoring our feeding grounds, making sure we don't mess it up and the numbers are right without putting a strain on anyone. How about that? The masquerade is nothing to joke about and it won't protect itself. You know that because that's how I raised you. Do you honestly think I had nothing better to do than to educate you, spend time and resources on you, take you all around the world and for what? Companionship? Love? <sighs> Those kinds of vulnerabilities will get you destroyed. Breaking some traditions will either get you disgraced or destroyed. Embracing carelessly will get you disgraced or destroyed, as will a botched feeding. You stayed in my havens. You wore the clothes I procured for you, using my ghouls. You learned the books I wanted you to read, to make you somebody, to make you valuable to this city. And even before that, I made my desire to embrace you known. I had to state my case as to why you would be no issue to the others in the city. I promised and vouched for you, and once I finally got the prince's approval and the primogen's support, I went with it. I am not cruel, you idiot. I've shown you as much compassion as I could without making myself vulnerable to my enemies in this city, and I have a few, though you would know hanging out with your sad excuse of a coterie. But you will understand when you reach my age and status. The only reason we embrace these knights is for necessity. Because our resources simply outgrow us after a certain point and we cannot tend to them effectively within the hours of the night. Anyone tells you otherwise, it's a lie. That being said, neonate or not, you will still be responsible for the assets I tasked you with. I trust you will choose your retainers carefully, just like I told you. Good. I'm glad you paid attention. Yes, own nothing, control everything. I swear, your generation, you're all the same. I blame the movies, to be honest. The movies in which the ancient vampire falls in love with a high school student. Blech. That is so stupid, though. It is necessary for feeding on the gullible. You know, glamorizing it a little bit. Wait till you've lived four lifetimes like me. Saw humanity at its worst. In war and famine, watch the kind change beliefs and ideologies like they change channels on the TV without anything really changing. Then see how much you value humanity when you see how arbitrary their laws are and how easily seduced they are. Oh, honey, live a while longer. You'll see I've been nothing but kind to you. Because from here on, it only gets worse. Cheers. I'm going to uh, set my Toreador Sire mask aside now and say hello, role-playing people. Yeah, since we're playing Vampire the Masquerade, our characters were embraced. That's one of the premises of the game. Our characters were turned into vampires, but the question itself is quite important and can have a multitude of answers. 
Uh, why was your character embraced? And I think to answer this question, we need to look at the social-cultural side of kindred existence. Even in Camarilla games, a lot of my players go with the my character was abandoned by their sire routine, and that might work for certain sires who are not fully aware of the consequences that come with embracing and leaving a child, sires who still make mistakes during feeding, maybe they want to save a dying person's life and end up embracing them, or so on, but this is really not a common embrace pattern among the more experienced and responsible Camarilla kindred, because a botched embrace can lead to masquerade violations and the final death of both progeny and the sire. Indeed, abandoning a child immediately after the embrace is the worst thing a member of the Camarilla can do. The next thing I often hear is, my character was embraced because they were so special, which is certainly a thing Kindred would gravitate towards embracing certain types of people, but rarely would a vampire embrace progeny that doesn't benefit them in any way, a child who will not serve their sire. A Toreador, for example, despite the common misconception, would be less tempted to embrace someone for their beauty or artistry or for being special than to simply add another pawn to the board, another set of eyes and ears which can come back with juicy gossip. I mean, think about it. You yourself were embraced, thus killed and traumatized, thrown into a neo-feudal pyramid scheme of a society, a criminal, mafia-like society governed by secrecy, the lex talionis and a rigid set of laws in which you were immediately made a tool for your sire, something to be used and most of all controlled, since the sire is legally responsible for the progeny's behavior and conduct. And you're telling me you would inflict that kind of pain and misery onto someone because they struck your fancy? Because they were a special little mortal? I think this is too romantic a vision. A sire embraces first and foremost because the social climate is right, because they are given permission. To embrace without permission is a death sentence. So now that they have this right to sire progeny, would they really waste it on some random individual, uh, maybe out of punishment? I think not. I think in the Camarilla, those who are determined and ruthless enough to rise to the top are the ones who are uh, given this gift, the right to embrace. And I do believe these people would consider their choices very carefully. What child would benefit me most without being too rebellious while exhibiting the traits that would allow them to take to on life well and serve me? Also worth mentioning, uh, it should be someone whose disappearance will not be looked into. Or even better, maybe it's someone from out of town. Maybe the embrace is happening in a completely different city and then the child will be relocated after the embrace to the sire city. Because the masquerade always needs to be protected. No sane sire wants his recently embraced panic child running around revealing their nature to mortals. And that can certainly happen. Instead, a sire would very much control the circumstances of both the embrace and the awakening of their child into unlife. Even when pretending to be distant, uncaring, absent, like the gangrel who often abandon their progeny, the sire would still be tempted to make sure the traditions are safe and the progeny doesn't ruin their reputation. Even an Osferatu who pretends to embrace for punishment probably is certain they can whip the child into a valuable member of the clan later on. The wise Bruja always know how to use their child's rage and fanatical devotion to a certain cause to furthering their own goals. So I think this question is often overlooked, but in itself it is really important. Your character is, after all, bloodbound to the sire, at least a little. The, the sire itself doesn't exist in a void in which they can indulge their every whim. 
right? But they exist in a ruthless secret society which will hold them accountable and punish them for their fledglings' mistakes. Regardless of what the sire tells their progeny uh, or how they orchestrate the embrace, the actual reasons for that embrace are probably pretty few. More often than not, kindred will find their resources outgrowing them the more they expand their influence. How can you control so much when you only have this many hours in the night? And the answer is embrace. You are so close to obtaining crucial information, but you are in desperate need of another piece on the board, a kindred piece. The answer, embrace. You need to set someone up, to frame someone for your crimes. A few years from now, someone you will not be responsible for in any way, but they are of your clan so as not to ruin uh, the, uh, the uh, political climate, uh, to not add to the tension between clans. So the answer is embrace and help your child become a neonate. Then you are no longer responsible for them. You can orchestrate a situation that gets them killed for your crimes and keeps your plans hidden from everyone. Now, I'm not saying mistake embraces don't happen. I'm not saying a sire can't adopt the child of another, even of another clan. But these are always calculated decisions. Maybe anarch embraces are a bit more liberal and certainly the Sabbat can embrace anyone they want during wartime. But I think in a Camarilla game, during character creation, this question isn't always given the attention it should be given. So I ask you, why was your character embraced? Why did your sire consider your character a valuable asset, someone worth killing in order to have and control, someone worth spending the right to sire on? Why did they let the prince and primogen know they were going to use this right, and how did they justify your introduction into the world of darkness to their peers? Obviously, you can't just say, well, I embraced this IT specialist because I'm looking to expand my influence to the detriment of that kindred or that clan. <laughs> of course not. So a romantic, humane reason is always the uh, excuse. Oh, they made my undead heart beat again. Oh, they sparked my long lost inspiration. Oh, they were a mistake, but I'll keep the child and use my right to sire. Oh. The mortal was dying. The only way to save them was to embrace them. These excuses and stories are many, but in truth, the wise sire makes it that the benefits of siring always outweigh the risks. Consider that. Thank you very much for listening. Take care, have fun, and don't forget to play.